Here we are at the Nautel booth with Chuck Kelly. Hello, Chuck. Good morning. Hi, How friend. are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. So, um, over at the uh, Telus Alliance booth, we were talking with Hans von Sutven yep. about uh, a new audio processor, Omnia SST, which includes this micro MPX. So it's multiplex over IP at a bit rate that most anybody can do. That's right. Now, your name came up. Right. Talk to me about that. Okay, so we're actually taking the signal that Hans is creating over in your booth. Right. You're sending it over on a microwave, same kind of microwave that people use for composite analog links. Right, it, it, this is an IP. But this one is IP. comparing IP, but it carries in the same bandwidth. This is important. So it's a, it's a 950? It's a 950 megahertz STL coming over RF, okay. coming into the STL here, coming out at 320 kilobits per second, going to the codec, coming out as MPX over AES, and going straight into our transmitter. Now I should point out that 320 kilobits per second, that's as much bandwidth as three and a half VoIP telephone calls. Exactly. It, it ain't much. It's tiny bandwidth. And, yeah. and the biggest advantage of this whole thing, in my opinion, you travel, you see a lot of radio stations. Yeah. There are a lot of stations out there today that are using composite analog STLs. Right. And with today's technology, that STL represents the weak link in the audio performance of any station. Right. It isn't the digital studios, it's not the digital transmitters, it's the STL. These guys can take that same bandwidth put a 320 kilobit STL in there and have incredibly good digital to digital bandwidth. So after it comes out of here as this IP stream, yep. uh, and it, it's, it, it's in Hans's micro MPX format, right. what happens then? It goes into a codec, it comes out of the codec into a sound card that handles the 192 kilobits per second, okay. and it's MPX over AES, and that goes straight into uh, the transmitter. MPX over AES, a technology that we kind of introduced together. We cooperated. Years ago. Yeah. In fact, it all started over wine in, in, a, in a restaurant in, in Madison, Wisconsin. Doesn't between everything. Between okay. Frank and I, <laughs> yeah, way yeah. too much wine. This was all done on the backs of napkins, like all good technical yes. in, innovations. <laughs> if only, if only the patent could be submitted that way. That's too. exactly right. <laughs> Save a lot of trouble. Yeah. So. Then, so now we have uh, MPX in the AES format, and that goes directly into... Transmitter. Transmitter. VS, or any of our transmitters now do this. Yeah. And, and yeah. it just brings it in, and it is so amazing because we don't have the A to Ds and the D to As and all that kind of nonsense. Right. Peak control is amazing. And, and the, the thing that's cool about the peak control is that's what defines loudness in today's radio stations. Right. So if I look over here, look at, can you zoom in on that right there? Can you zoom in on the modulation monitor there? Look at the peak control on this. It's, it's crazy. 199.9, yeah. But never over 100. And so a, this, you know, a lot of folks were worried, well, wait a minute, how are you getting the MPX into 320 kilobits? Oh, we're using a codec. Well, everybody knows that codecs cause overshoots, but Excellent. not this one. Not this one, and and it, and that's what's really cool. So key takeaways, I mean, this is the YM, micro MPX, it's difficult to explain. Main thing is you can replace a composite STL or if you're using, for instance, satellite distribution and right. you're paying for the bandwidth, right. you can save huge amounts of money by just going to 320 kilobits. So this is this is a big, big thing. And when we talk about the peak control, we talk about the audio quality that Hans has done here, you're not giving up anything. Going full digital and getting all the benefits. A broadcaster who's uh, transmitting ac across a country, for example, a state level broadcaster, yep. they need one audio processor. They don't need one at every transmitter. That's side correct. Because it's perfectly controlled Absolutely. and delivered there. I understand uh, that along with micro MPX, you still get your RDS data that right. travels with it. That's right. You still get uh, Hans's, uh, well, our, our technology for stereo embedding. That's right. So you get. Han says two or three dB louder for free. Yep. Uh, so you get that free loudness. Well, there's another benefit too. If you take the signal and put it in composite form and distribute it in a composite form, right? Doing SFNs becomes easy. Yes, single frequency networks. And that's huge because yeah. we no longer, you know, the, the the figure of merit for a digital uh, SFN is one tenth of a dB. I challenge anybody to get one tenth of a dB resolution with a greenie. Ah, uh -huh. it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But when you do it all in digital, it's perfect. Now you're doing this in digital, but I do want to mention that uh, out of this this codec that's running on a computer, you you can have uh, an analog output, and that would be your analog MPX for an analog exciter. You, 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 if, if you want to go back to analog. why would you want an analog I don't exciter, want to do Kirk? An exciter with a with an AES uh, input. Wash your mouth out with salt. <laughs> 
Well, are you going to go recommend an analog audio processor? No, but well, okay. You know, I'm still in my said. little stations. I'm still in the dark ages. We're using an analog connection okay, in New enough. York Signer. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. But we'll we'll go digital. Just for fun, I want to change the subject yeah. for a second. Sure. So, in your little radio stations, how much power have you got? Well, we have several FMs, but our AM, we were able to to uh, drop two towers, yep. go to one tower and 3,700 watts during the day. That's great. Big okay. improvement for us. Okay, so we just installed a new transmitter. All right. It's going to make you drool. Okay. We are in the process of installing a 2 million watt transmitter what? at Antenna what? Hungary. Yeah, just outside days, Budapest. I thought the days of that were over. No, AM is alive and kicking. And these people are covering a continent or more yeah. with this signal. There are things you can do with AM you can't possibly do with FM. Talking about covering large areas, talking about covering things that we, we, when you have natural disasters and problems, AM gets out. AM crawls over the mountains, AM gets through. You know, a, a lot of us say, well, why not just do that coverage if you want to reach people around the world, uh, expats, whatever, uh, do it by the internet. Yeah. And you've, you know, well, it becomes obvious. The internet is reliable as long as it's not political, and we're a little worried that maybe in various countries here and there, a switch could be thrown. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and AM just gets through. I mean, how many yeah. technologies do you have where you can sit in your car, drive all day, and still be listening to the same station? Yeah, yeah. It's cool. I hear you. I it's hear cool. You. So this is this is a point of pride for us. This is this is fun stuff. This is as good as it gets. This is Nirvana for a transmitter manufacturer to well, be building a two megawatt. Well, congratulations on the two megawatt. Thank thing. you. How many? Do you know how many transistors are in there? I was thinking about that, and I I can't, I can't even hazard a guess how many FETs there are in there. Oh my goodness! All right. Yeah. We're here with uh, Jeff Kelly at Nautel. I, I think I, I'm legally required to hold this at the end. Fair enough. At Nautel, we're at IBC 2016.